Hey everyone, welcome to Wikcode, where in this video, we're going to learn about the JavaScript map object, including methods and use cases. So what is a map? So a JavaScript map is an object that holds key value pairs. What makes it unique is that it remembers the original insertion order of the keys, a key in the map can only occur once, and the keys and values can be anything, such as an object, primitive type, etc. To create a JavaScript map, we use the map constructor. So here at the constructor, new map. We can store data in the map by using the set method. The set method takes two arguments. The first is the key, and the second is the value. So here, our key is my key, and our value is my value. We can retrieve data stored in the map object with the get method, providing it the key we want the value for. So here we get my key, and then if we log out my val, we get my value printed to the console. If there is no value associated with the key, then undefined, is returned. So here, we try to access a key that doesn't exist. If we log it out, we get undefined. We can then empty out a map object by using the clear method. So here, we clear the map with mymap.clear, and we check the size of the map to see that it is zero because it has been cleared out. So the size property returns a number of key value pairs in the map object. We can remove a specific key from the map using the delete method. So here, we set two keys, my key 2 and my key 3, and then we delete my key 2, and then we also delete a key that doesn't exist in the map. And the delete method returns true if the element existed in the map and has been removed, and false if the element doesn't exist, which is why we get true for deleting my key 2 and false for deleting my key 4, because we don't have my key 4 in the map object. We can check if an element is contained in the map object with the has method. So here, we check if my key, if my key 2 is present in the map, which it is, and we get true. And then we check if my key 4 is present in the map, and it isn't, so we get false. We can retrieve all the keys in the map object with the keys method. And what's good about this is the keys that are returned will be in insertion order. So here, we set three values in the map, my key, my key 2, my key 3. We obtain all the keys, and then we log them out, and specifically, what the keys method returns is an iterator object. And an iterator object has a next method that returns an object containing the current value and a Boolean signaling if the iterator has been completely iterated through or not. So we can see now we have my key. When we log out the keys, the first one gives my key done is false, my key two done is false. And then finally, when we've iterated all the way through, we get done set to true and a value of undefined. Though a more common use case of this, instead of logging this, is say for const key of my keys, we console.log out the key as we can iterate over an iterator object, which is what this returns. We can do the same thing with the map object's values by using the values method. So here we set the same values. So this time, instead of using mymap.keys, we use mymap.values. And once again, we now we retrieve that iterator object, but the value is the value as opposed to the key. And once again, we can see done being false until we are on, until we have completely iterated through the map. And then once again, the more common use case of this, is we could say for const val of my values, console.log out the val. And then we get my val, my val2, my val3. And another handy method is we can iterate over the object's keys and values using the entries method. So here, switch this from values to entries. And what this returns is where the value is both the key and the value. And once again, we have done for an iterator object, set to false, false, and then true when we've iterated all the way through. And a handy way of working with this is we use destructuring and we say const, I believe it is key val of, this is just called my values, console.log the key, and then the value. And so if we destructure it, and let's change this to say, my entries, so it clears it up. If we destructure the entries, we get the key and value, which we could print here. So we get my key, my val, my key two, my val two, my key three, val three. The map object also comes with its own for each method, which is handy. So we can call for each like this. And the for each method takes a callback function where the first argument is the current value being iterated over. So we get value, which will be my val. The second argument is the current key being iterated over. So key here, which is my key. And then the third argument is the map object itself. So each time we log out this map, we can see it printed out down here, with the entries of my key mapped to my val, and so on. 
And now let's talk about a JavaScript object versus a map. So both maps and objects are key value pairs where the value can be retrieved, keys can be deleted, etc. However, they are not identical and there are certain use cases where using a map would be preferable. First, a map provides better security when setting keys and values. So as a demonstration, here, if the provided key was toString and we were placing it in a JavaScript object, then the toString method would be overwritten. So here we have a my object, and because it inherits from the object prototype, if we set the property toString to overriding toString, and then we console log this out, we can see that we have overwritten this property. So calling my object up to string gives an uncaught error. My object to string is not a function. Whereas if we don't override it and we call this, it's not overwritten and we don't get any errors. However, if we were to use a map, then it still works fine. So here we have a map object. We set the key to string to overriding to string. And if we call this, we get object map. But if we get the property to string, we get the message overriding to string. So when using user provided data, which could lead to potentially overriding inherited properties, using a map object would be preferable. Another difference is that the keys in a map can be any value, whereas in an object, the key must be either a string or a symbol. So here, notice how the map preserved the type of the key as a number listed here, while the object transformed the key into a string. So when we set my object to one and we log out the keys, we get an array with a string, or even though we set it as a number, Whereas with the map, when we set the key as a number, we retain its type. And then there are a few other differences between the two, just that maps perform better in scenarios where key value pairs are frequently added and removed, and maps always keep its keys in insertion order, while this is not guaranteed with the regular JavaScript objects. So you can see there are certain scenarios where using the JavaScript map will be beneficial, but this is my video on the JavaScript map object. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing today and hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.